If you've ever been in an accident, you'll understand what I mean by everything goes into slow motion. It just like, oh no, I can't avoid this situation. It's about to unfold in front of me. This tree popped out of nowhere. Um, disaster. So I had to tell John and it's like, I don't know, it's like telling a kid that he, Santa didn't come. I'm a little bit there. Any reason why you should be looking up at me in the cab? Right for 10 foot there, son. At least we didn't come here for one angle. Sir! Things happen when you buy merch. We make more YouTube videos and we make more FarmFlex videos. What is FarmFlex? It's not on YouTube. Install the app. If this is after Black Friday, install the app and you get to fire up the free trial. That's two steps, an installation and hit go and you get free FarmFlex access. I leave it with you. Here's this week's blog, which is the new guys getting trained. Right, Connor, where about are we today? Someone's loan, by the looks of it. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong with that, Connor? That's a big sword right there, like. Look at the rose, mate. Ah, uh, your man moved out with the Husqvarna. <laughs> <laughs> we're right on the edge of Dundonald Town, and uh, we're filming for our Ag Life series, Lindsay's. I'm just looking at the James's daddy in the background. Mowing away. James has went from being a beef farmer to to dairy, and he's going for the hopefully the four cuts this year. These few fields, I think there's nine fields in here, 20 odd acres, 27 acres. When he was working with uh, with the beef, he was doing two cuts and then one cut of, uh, of bales. Well, no, he was all bales actually. Uh, yeah, he was but it was always two cuts and maybe pushing for a third, whereas now you're just three and pushing for a fourth. Yes. So uh, it, it, it's, it's been good. It's been interesting to see a setup that's changed over um, just recently, although he's in the full swing of it now. He is, you know, a dairy farmer. How many cattle did he say he had about? And around the 100 mark. In around 100 mark, yes, in around 100 mark. But he's working with the dairy shorthorns. He's not pushing for an old Holstein. skeleton a Holstein eye. It's What's wrong with Holstein? That's right, we're hosting. Sure, they're, they're done in about four years. Listen, they melt themselves dry, and that's them gust. They're, they're. You need them skinny, like you need them bony, like. Talk to us about this, this cattle and how placid they are, uh, Connor. You had a bit of an episode. I had a bit of an episode with a bull the other day. And yesterday. Yesterday. Well, he was, he was having a good sniff, Connor. He tried to, he tried to jump up on your back and have a piggyback. Uh, aye, there was you know. cows all around me. A cow here, get away. A cow there, aye. I get away and he nudged me and I'm three yards the other direction, turned around and there's a Charlie Bull standing looking at me. He sort of surprised you too. Oh, I wasn't. When I seen him, I was like, I need to get out. I'm away. Like, you can't rely on me to back you up. Like, so I suppose what he would have done, like, an outer lap with the cows, made sure they're all there and he thought, right, you're with us now. That's that. And just made sure I was still there more or less. You're part of my crew uh, and you're staying here. <laughs> the big man. Yes. What else happened yesterday? Do you want to talk about it? Well, about they're, going they're, maybe they're, three or four hours of a, a good interview, good quality stuff. Uh, the rain coming down, this man's heart's breaking about not getting the silage, and then somebody wipes the interview. <laughs> well, what happened was we've done an interview for must be two hours, three hours. Good interview. Jumped in the tractor, ready to go, and the heavens open. But I'm talking hailstone. Hailstones coming down in May. Yeah, I was I was gutted for him because I could see it in his face. He was raging, he was raging, and I thought I'm going to leave, stay, keep my distance, put the camera on him, he'll be able to look back at this and laugh at it maybe, or smile and say, well, that's what it was like in uh, 2021, whenever I tried to, uh, tried to have uh, the first, try to get the first cut in and, and the heavens opened. I was having a cup of tea, and Connor said to me, Brian, will you unlock this mic? So I tried to unlock the mic, so I pressed menu, pressed the up button five times, and then just across the top of our of our mics it says eration or, or formatting card and the panic just sat in and i was like no 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 and the card was wiped like a so fox I, in the headlights kind of like a fox in the head i was uh, it was so i'm not too sure connor sabotaged that and actually unlocked it and gave it to me and then just said here unlock that no one fine rightly because i laughed at him about about the bull but i'm not i'm not i'm not convinced so i think 
there has to be joint responsibility for that, Connor. Well, I thought I was being the responsible adult and getting the professional to do it because I didn't know what I was doing, but yeah. no. the <laughs> professional done what I was scared of doing. <laughs> um, disaster. So that phone call, well, I, I should have phoned John, but I didn't phone John. Um, I just went back to the office and had to tell John. And it's like, I don't know, it's like telling a kid that he Santa didn't come. You know, whenever you tell John you've lost audio on a mic. Then James is more the... What had the burn slipped on it? Brand new burn, but it just collapsed on them. So, so it rained. We had a chat with a mechanic. The mechanics a way to get a new burn to try and put a new burn in. Then I thought I'll come here. We'll fly the drone while James's dad's uh, mowing away. We'll have footage of that. <sighs> and then what? <laughs> this tree popped out of nowhere. I like it's not. It wasn't my fault. But uh, I think I hit one of the branches of the tree and the drone went down. But as the other boy, Ryan, always says in the office, if you break a propeller, you didn't crash. So technically, I didn't crash. We put another propeller on and we're, and we're good to go. So round two, we fear, we fear nothing. We fear no rain. We fear no trees. Right, we may get back to a bit of work. Donald, just say say Belfast. Belfast is over that direction yonder, and then Yetnards and Cumber. And there's Scrabble Tower over there, and there's the more mountains way over next Newcastle. You can just see over there. I could have done with four stroller, but I thought three would have done that. But yeah, sure. First time at it, you can learn by your mistakes. First time with Harvest, or is uh, it? No, it's not too bad. What were you bringing it in with before? Oh, uh, Baylor. We oh, bailed it on. I bailed it on. Wrapped it and then carted it all home and then stacked it. And, you know, like we've dropped all our 110 acres there yesterday. And we're going to get, try and get it all lifted here today. Sure, with bales you could never do that. It's all right if you're making five or six hundred or something like that. Maybe you know, maybe less. But see, when you're over the thousand mark, this here was well, maybe not any cheaper, like, but it's done in a day and you don't have to worry about it. What tractors are yours then? That T6, the, uh, my dad's buck rigging in the 6497 there. And the 6180 there, Matt's in. You have 30 minutes, so there's no chat up lines. Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Straight in, boy. So, uh, is this your first time, too? Yeah, it's my first time. Only joined there. Um, uh, this week there, I'm actually from Cork. Like, you probably right. pick up in the accent as well. Oh, right, yeah. that's it. Right? What got you into this here? I suppose when I was about 15 or 16, I kind of just uh, took out a phone, just out of recording, like, and I always watched Farm Picks, didn't like, so I kind of said, ah, just a bit of a win win for me. Uh, you get out videos of the make, like, should you do it before the drawing, like, or would you kind of prefer being you know, at the bail? I don't mind how it bails, like, I've done a bit of it, away from JFs and stuff, like, I drive anything. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. Do you have a bit of comfort in this yacht today? No, right? it's no. alright. It's plenty of power, like, that's. I have a new home band and the boy I work for is a 7050 there and I uh, he's two 7050s actually and one's Park Command, one's Auto Command and what would your preference be there? Oh Park Command any day. What horsepower is this you in? It's about a, sitting about 170, 175 she was down out at the shop or something. That's something you're Alright that's 6180. How many hours is up on that? We bought her in 2008 and there's only four and a half thousand on it. And the clock stopped at eight and a half. And I think it could be about 12, 13 thousand hours in that travel. Never a clutch in that travel. 
never a spawner in here. Apart from six injectors on the pump was reconditioned, and it's just sitting doing 170 horse. What's he like in a hour? So you see, like for a fella that's in a hour, it's only like a day or so, like he fares the hang of like, you know. Like James is a good driver, like. Well, it's like anything, once you have a bit of time on it, you know, you learn every day. Like, I got a wee run out on her last night, it was out grass over the other side of the doll there. It was a light crop, but is it nearly better than a day, but a bit of heavier crop, like. You got about 350 horsepower. I'm not too sure, see. James thought it was a, a John Deere engine or that, but it's actually a Cummins. Oh, is it? Yeah. There's a bit of a growl off her, right? Like, oh, in yeah. fairness, like. Drew silage before, I'd say. Aye, uh, he has. A couple. Not a whole lot, like, really. It's tidy enough, on it? Aye, he's dead on it. He would be a good wee trapper driver, though. It just takes his time. See, if you were doing the same thing every day, see, you're on grass every day. I couldn't do it. Oh, see, yeah. the, I usually, the boy I work for, he puts his grass in my wagon. Oh, yes, yeah. I do all the buck rigging. I like buck rigging, like. But, behind you, Adam? Uh, not but getting there, like. Buck rig four years now away from four years, yeah. Ah, it's a nice old job. You've plenty of time, you know, in between the wagon because you're no you're no pop push really. Yeah, yeah. You've plenty of time to roll, like it makes course side like. What, what's it like doing a wagon get wagon grass in like draw you know, and the pit in like is it What's it like the buck rig? Yeah. Ocus. It depends. <laughs> depends how many times he drops his knives, you know, you get there all lump, you know, if he blocks her, yeah, he has yeah. to drop his knives and you get a few lumps, but oh, you can always work with it, like yeah. you just have to flick it. She's feeding the hill here and there. She's still going right with all that. It's not too bad there, 10 miles an hour. But they bought that T6 in, and yeah. this here sort of retired a wee bit from the loader work, oh, but no, uh, no uh, I drew a lot of bales this here with the loader and the bale driller on behind. Oh. Who's on the pit today then? His dad, Clifford. Would this be his first time buck raking now? Oh, Clifford right? would have buck raked years ago, like, oh, but he? uh, he's never, uh, hasn't done anything since. Like, he would have buck raked with a Grey Fergie or a 35 or something. Would you ever like to try a buck rake with a tractor with a setup like that? Or? There's a front linkage in that Power Command 7050. Yes, yeah. And I buck rake with her. But see for that there, that finer chop stuff, 100%, yeah. but see for wagon grass. Oh, you uh, nearly want to load or so, really? Yeah, you need the loader, like, to do a good job of it, like. It would sort of, now push off, you just sort of push it off in the lumps, well, that there would sort of just fall off. So was more maneuverability, really, with the loader? Or uh, right? Getting in the walls and stuff, too, like, tight. Yeah. Getting stuff pushed down the corners and stuff. Oh, for my sins, I am in a big 6180 Massey. Never in my life have I drove one. And we're in the low box. Kevin was looking at her earlier and says, Oh, that'd be about she set, whatever that. Here we get that yoke. So, that'd be me. Temperature gauge isn't working. Rev counter isn't working. The fuel gauge is doing this. That's the ground near hand. I'd like to be carting from there. <laughs> and on the hour clock, about 8,000 hours. Yes, yes. Good enough burners on her. They look a lot like TM burners, right enough. So, it's welcome time. The man that was driving this has gone on to the bunker rig. And I haven't heard of this. I had the eye in the bunker rig, but I never used one in the front. I'm going to have to learn at some stage how to bunker rig in the front. I feel like I had something there that makes me go faster. Oh, I just discovered. <laughs> this is the spinner lever. Never knew it. So it was two spinners down, coming down the hill there. Don't make a difference. This is unfamiliar to me. I'm all left and right, the wrong way around. I'm used to the indicator over here, but that's my spinner. I'm used to going you know, up a gear like that, but I'm actually going up a gear like that. At least we're doing uh, a bit of forward speed now. 26 mile an hour, she must be 40 k box on her. 
The dad always tell me don't play with the traffic. That was the line when he first taught me how to drive. But I didn't really understand what he meant until I was about 13 when I rear-ended my first car. So there was an, an avenue, uh, a back avenue at Clark's factory in Upperlands that was like tarmac like the road so you could let her at it but it was a private road and I uh, was carting around bales so they were bringing my dad was bringing the bales to the end of the lane and the guy who had rented that field was my dad's cousin and we were tapping them in his field so he came down in with his car to see how we were getting on Just getting familiar with my gears here. He came down in his car to see how we're getting on. I said to myself, I'll see if I can keep up with him here in a way. <laughs> it's been 13, you know. Up in the top gear, hot on his tail. He spotted the front of me one of the tractors and he didn't realise the system we were working. He let on the brakes, thinking the tractor was coming towards him because it was a wee bit narrow. So he let on the brakes, then I let on the brakes. My two back wheels locked up. So that just as nice as you like, the weight carrier touched the boot lid of the Ford Granada and just it just melted in front of me and this is all in slow motion. I was like 13 year old and if you've ever been in an accident, you'll understand what I mean by everything goes into slow motion. It just like, oh no, I can't avoid this situation. It's about to unfold in front of me. I could not believe it. I was totally and utterly gutted that I had A, had a car, B, had a car someone I know, C, my dad was there to see it. <laughs> so he came up. Oh, I was just so annoyed at the time. I was literally just the bit door that had been slightly folded and then the glass popped out of it. But it taught me a very, very valuable lesson. You need brakes and you need enough space between you and the man in front to get stopped at all times, at all costs. No matter what you're driving. Car, Jeep, tractor, bicycle, it's all the same. The faster you go, the harder you are to stop. Massey, 6180. I've got a uh, frame here for a front loader, which is what this lever is. I wonder what my tipping lever is. I'm guessing it's this one because it's pushed forward. Nope. Yes, there we go. So push forward to tap. And then she looks like she's coming down pretty well. She's so looked there. Lift arms, hand throttle. Oh! That's some job. I'm not revving more than we should be. This is... There we go, back to normal. So where would the four wheel drive switch be? Or maybe she's mechanical. I don't think she is mechanical. You know, there it is there. I think that's it there. There's not a lot written on these switches to make sense of them. I'll figure this out yet. I'm guessing I'm going to make an awful mess on this first load here, but sure. I wonder what year this girl is. Answers in the comments, please. When did they build 6180s? She's like, anything that's ever been made that's red paint on her, the bonnet is pink. This is actually James's first day driving a harvester ever. Bought this second hand, it's come to the conclusion it's time to move towards pit. It's built a nice new pit in the yard for this season. Changed his machinery to buy himself a second hand saw propel. He was looking at an FX. He wasn't sure if he'd made the right decision when he bought the deer. I reassured him that I think, personally, that's a smarter buy than an FX. Because all I ever heard stories of FXs was men putting the guts up the spout. First time today. That's the first one. <laughs> that's why it's a bit of a panic station. Of course, you'll be under surveillance then when it happens. I oh, know. Sick. I just couldn't remember how to reverse it there for a minute. Where'd you come across this? Harvester Lane. I'd seen her there at Erwin's before Christmas, up there at Nod's Corner. I actually had no real intention of buying a self propel, to be honest, but I was looking at trail harvesters. Well, when I say looking, I was pricing them. I think to get into a good second-hand harvester, you're in the 25, 30,000. 
So I just thought, you know, I wonder what a second hand self propel would cost. And I just rang the price, it was 25,000 you're looking at. Went down and had a look at it. Got it for 18. The fellas that opened her, I think they would look after her, knew anything she needed, she got. She was getting a right feed there. Left in that 6k, the equivalent class list was 35 40,000. You know, the John Deere wouldn't have the same range of sale value, with all these older ones anyway, but they're still basic enough that you know, two blogs can fix. Well, the previous, I was looking into buying a combi bailer, you know, to do away with a wrapper, you know, make it a bit quicker that way. But a new combi bailer, you're in this mid 60s. I put the silo up, this harvester, trillers, and the buck rig for 10 grand cheaper. Did you buy all them trailers then, or are they someone else's, or what way? No, I bought them two freezers. So I, I had a wee uh, lady with a tondo rate, you know, for the baler. I traded her and bought them two freezer trailers, 3,000 pound each. So the disadvantage of a freezer is the wee left on the back side of the jitter. Grass backwards to get it to play on the corners in the back. It's a bit like a splash plate if you overshoot the tuner at all, and it hits that back, uh, back door, it's just, <laughs> it goes everywhere. So, if and doubt at this stage of the game, if you're not filling your own load, you don't know where the back of your tuner is, just full position, let the harvester man on top or out, give him a chance at it. There you have it. We full. Now, I hit that switch for four wheel drive. So I don't know if I put it in or out. I've hit it again in the hope that I put it out. There's no lights. I can't tell. You don't want to be in top gear in four wheel drive on the road. It doesn't feel like it's in. Just locking around tight now. See what the big mass he's fit for now. Oh, the pole's coming on! Oh! That's second gear, boys. Second gear! The big freighter are too much for her. Feel the power! I quite like the four splitters in this. That would be definitely an improvement over the, the two splitters of the 50 series deer. That's not the right lever I was feeling there now. Oh, maybe we are in four wheel drive. Oh, that's that lock on now. Oh, boys, made a wild bikes now. Oh. That lock works and the light works now. What a time to accidentally hit it. Half of it to the corner coming out the gate. I'll start that again because we've only hit record oh, after no, no. after a 15 minute interview there. No, that wouldn't make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the boys in the office got a wee bit jealous that we were out at first cut and uh, they had to come and be a part of it because we told them how amazing it was. Just getting out of hand. Shh, what can I hear in the background? So, half an hour, 40 minute interview for practice, Connor. Yeah, boy. Ask nothing about tractors, no questions about tractors, no questions about farming. Half an hour, like I said, the band, no chat up lines. No. Get them gonna kill me. I, you, oh, you. oh no, don't kiss in her cuddling, <laughs> just, <laughs> just in there. Just using the abuse. <laughs> oh, he's getting on brave and well for the first time in the harvest. Isn't it? He's doing well. We followed him down around that bend up there, thought he handled it right well, you know? Mm hmm. Oh, aye, on the road. Uh, That's uh, the time we rode that. Aye, isn't it? I always I used to see a youngster race up and down it in the wee car, Ronald Cleo, remember? They were writing it off. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> when you didn't have a car in the world. Yeah. This is like my, what do we class here, happy place. Uh, I got a few days of this away from work. It's 
a few days is nearly plenty too. Exactly, you can not drop it and run away at it again. I don't fancy doing it as a living. No, uh, you definitely know. not. Been offered a few times to go to contract with boys and James and at home's enough nearly. Or if James is doing somebody else's, I would give them a hand type of thing, you know. So I always find once you get the slurry out, you're jumping in the butt to get the grass, and then the grass yeah. comes, you do three hours, and you're like, no, get me out of this. I've done enough. <laughs> Sorry if you're a bit of comfort, you'll be all right, and that's a year thing. Yeah, yeah. Standard new haul. Oh, aye. Well, it's just what? She's 260. I'd like to think she'd be able to cope with this. Normally she runs the trailed harvester at home. Would, would you rather a cart beside a trailed harvester or a self propelled? Good question. This is definitely quicker. The trailed harvester is a different ball game. It's a lot more. You have a lot more to look out yeah, for. Yeah. The driver of the, self, or the harvester has a lot more moving parts, as the saying goes. Yes. This is alright, that doesn't bother me, you know, what what James is doing, but... Well, have you spent much time beside one of these harvesters, like, or...? Not a lot, no. Thing? Where's he going? He's going back round. This fella works in the MOT centre. And he's a brother-in-law, Philip, there's doing the raking. At their silence, he's always uh, buck raking, you know? He wouldn't be the... Just saying this on camera. He wouldn't be the best trailer driver. <laughs> are you calling him out like you are? <laughs> oh, he's good for a bit Is of he? stick. Hey, we can nearly drive today. <laughs> <laughs> we're going there, we're going. <laughs> the the moment on camera, <laughs> exactly. Pressure on, you know. Can't see him for loving her money. It's alright, I'm just burning diesel here, like. Should I get in and ask him why he thinks you? <laughs> oh, I uh, know very well what he would say. We're about 20 foot away from him. <laughs> oh, God. It's now shoes of speed now, James. Like, do you have to... Have you gears to press up and down through your... I says, oh, she can put her on automatic, like, you know. Okay. Can, but it's just fine, James. James can be at a different speed, different uh, times, different parts of the field. Right, Gary, move forward there. You haven't got a flipping four ton on. That man's a disaster film. Uh, right, Gary, come on, wake up. So are you driving her in manual or automatic there, right? Manual. Manual now, so she's just a wee bit easier. Because the vario she'll be up and down the gears like yes. mad. You know, if you're dropping, dropping down, she would be... At least she can control it a wee bit more yeah. than what he's doing. Because he, he's up and down them now and again. Ah, she's still she's the bottom. She, yeah, she's still plenty of power. Power to burn. <laughs> ah. Right, Gary, would you move forward? Look, well, sit back, sit there. No point open the window. You're sitting way too far forward. Just sit there. Yes. Do you think you'll be friends after today? Oh, I'll be alright. <laughs> That's not. No, I never fall out of it. Sure, you're better being like that. Get the things out of the air. This trailer feels top heavy every time you look at her and she's bobbling about. She sits very, very high. Uh, I don't think the super singles helps her now. There's something about trailers on super singles that gives me the fear. I know, that's just what I give me. I just I it's the lean see even the tractor because uh, she's all suspension. This here leans and I'm looking going. Oh. It just gives you the willies at that point. Like when you loop out round here and down, she just gives you a big lean and you're like <laughs> I don't know if she's staying up or not. I well if it goes down we're we're on a swivel hitch anyway, so the, the tractor will stay up. Ah, uh, that's true too. <laughs> what are you? I'm New Holland. New Holland? Ah, uh, the 774 in. I got rid of her there a, a couple of months ago and bought a Fiat instead. Oh, why? But I'm used to case fighters and drive John Deere's, like, and don't really rate them either. I think once you get used to the buttons, it's hard to go back to a gear stick too. Yeah, definitely. I always <laughs> weaving it to in the yard and you get into it and you're going, uh, fighting with it, you know, and having <laughs> You like an arm wrestling match? To be fair... 
I've always enjoyed a gear stick coming up out of the floor. Always enjoyed that. Don't mind changing gears like that now. For a wee change. Yes, lad. She might not be the smoothest, but she's getting there. I'd say one splatter off top, two splatters, three splatters. Are we going to make it? Yes, we are. I, de I definitely prefer, uh, like it. This is a part of burden, but you see that hill getting up into his place. This yeah. here is this is the ticket for that. <laughs> but it's um, it's not the uh, still still like the TM. We just like it. It's part of it. The classics. Oh, I think the Massey was struggling going up the hill. That's why we had to change. A lot of best standard Massey. Like yeah. This. Oh, I. We'll have to give them a slate about the Massey. Some okay. steep hills in here. Just looking over there, looking going. Well, it's a bit steeper looking over there. You might want them to know if you're in four-wheel drive going on there. That's some hull. I had, a, I had a warming engine there now. That's whenever you're glad that your temperature gauge isn't working. Right there. Now all them cars can pass me right there like, what is that tractor doing? What is that in my road for? What are they doing? What? We waited until rush hour to come out to do that there with that grass. Why, why are they taking grass somewhere? They don't just leave the grass in the field. People. The grass feeds the cows. Which creates either the milk or the beef. If you enjoy in the morning. And that is not thanks to Tesco. That is thanks to your local farmer. I have to behave myself for that man there because that's his tractor. But this is his tractor. <laughs> You're going to rash me, huh? I'll never be rash in front of the owner. Oh, that's not forward. That's not a shuttle lever. <laughs> it's lovely green stuff. Job and it's getting fast. There you have it. First load of grass in 2021. Well, it's still on there for some reason. That was it, guys. Don't forget, free trial of Farmflakes. That's not on YouTube. <laughs>